finding out how we can get them to do what they should do. Even sports. From the gem of the Antilles, uh, we have Mr. Woodrow Williams from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uncle Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Auntie Marlene, Marlene Hall, the daughter of Miss Harper Hall from the island of Barbados with us. Uh, Auntie Marlene. We also have a young trainer in the program, Miss Alicia Salmon from Barbados. Alicia. And um, I think we, we save the best for last. We have somebody who is not from the Caribbean region, but over the last few months they have become Caribbean in everywhere. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite to take a bow, Miss uh, Michelle Manx, who is an intern with um, the office in Barbados, Miss Michelle Manx from Canada. I think I did save the best for last. Sorry, Michelle. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when I looked at the program, I saw that I had to introduce Miss Cathy Harper Hall. And my head was hurting me. How would I introduce Miss Cathy Harper Hall? I think of everything. I went into Shakespeare. I read Shakespeare. I read all Caribbean authors. And I could not have found a good way to introduce Miss Harper Hall. Then the idea came to me to ask my friends, the people who Miss Harper Hall has influenced, who has made an impact on shorter years in the Caribbean. And I've asked my friends here in Grenada and show the Caribbean to, in one word, I know if I'll ask for a sentence, we'll be here until two, five o'clock tomorrow morning, just introducing Miss Harper Hall. So some of the few words they said of Miss Harper Hall that she's caring. She's motherly. We know that you don't have to be the biological mother of somebody to be their mother, but Miss Harper Hall, I think, is a woman with the most children in the Caribbean, almost 5,000 of them. And we, ve we fight to, um, you know, each one of us, we fight to get that attention. So it's very hard, you know, one person competing against 4,999. Uh, she's very youthful. She might look differently, but she's very youthful. I think she's an Olympian. She's an Olympian. She's, um, she has won gold medals at senior games. So many of us can say that they represented our country and has won medals at um, any activities, except Carter. Very few of us can say that. Um, she's very passionate about what she, do, she does. You know, every year you meet Miss Paul, she's saying, next, this year is my last. I'll be retired from this next year. I heard people say, she was saying that since in 2000. Every year, this next year is going to be your last. And that final year cannot reach yet. We're very thankful for that. We know that she has a very, very long way to go still. She's very dedicated, ladies and gentlemen. She's an inspiration to everybody she, she meets. And she's very energetic. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very pleased within the Caribbean Healthy Lifestyle Project to have somebody who to mold us in that way. So ladies and gentlemen, could you please join with me as we welcome Ms. Cathy, <laughs> Ms. Cathy Harper Hall, Regional Coordinator of CHLP, <laughs> to deliver the future address. Good night, everyone. I think when Carrie is finished with me, I must get to heaven. His Excellency, the Governor General, Sir Daniel Williams, President of the Caribbean Amateur Boxing Association, Mr. Ralph James, President of the Grenada Olympic Committee, Mr. Ralston LaHaye, President of the Grenada Football Association, Mr. Ashley Folks and Mrs. Folks, President of the Grenada Netball Association, Mrs. Patsy Dragon, President of the Grenada Athletics Association, Mr. Charles George, Visiting Regional CHLP trainers, other distinguished guests, parents, other supporters, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Let me start this presentation by asking my audience a question to which you may respond with a show of hands. My question is, how many of you have had at least one extremely proud moment in your life which has been caused by the action and general behavior of a group of young people? Please show your hands one proud moment that you can attribute to what a group of young people did. Thank you very much. I have several. Almost every day of my life, I am thrilled by what the young people of the Caribbean are doing, what they do on a daily basis. But this is one that ranks very close to the top of my list of proud moments. This moment when I'm witnessing and being a part of the launch of the Grenada chapter of the CHLP club is an exceptionally proud one for me. These young people who have formed this club and who have planned this launch tonight have come a long way in a short time. Please bear with me while I give you a brief outline of the route they took to get to this point. And I must say here that so far 
Guyana, Anguilla, and St. Lucia have already launched their clubs, and they are actively striving to, up, striving to uphold the tenets of CHLP, which I'm sure the Grenada chapter will do. St. Vincent and the Grenadines are getting ready to launch in January, and Barbados and St. Kitts are well on their way. The other islands are getting jealous, and I'm sure that in another year or so, we will have all 13 countries that are in this program going, getting their clubs off the ground. So back to my background information to let you know how these kids get, got to this point. In 2002, right here in Grenada, of course, Kizzy pointed out to you that this project started in 2000 in Jamaica. And in 2002, right here in Grenada, the focus of the project changed from presentations to large groups of young women to the start of training young leaders. 13 young leaders representing seven Caribbean countries were selected from among players in the Caribbean Netball Association's on the 16th tournament to pilot a training program as regional youth leaders. No Grenadian was among that group. Today, there are 22 certified regional youth leaders, of whom seven are from the original 13. There is still none certified from Grenada. But after a two-day workshop, which ends on Sunday, December 8th, two days from today, that will change. And Grenada will have five certified youth leaders and one certified mentor, and will jointly share the top spot with Guyana, who also have five certified youth leaders. A remarkable achievement for the youth of Grenada. They also have the distinguished record of, ha of having another 11 waiting in the wings to compete one workshop to be certified. What a force Grenada will be with which to be reckoned when they have a total of 16 certified regional youth leaders who will be empowered to go anywhere in the Caribbean and take the CHLP message to their peers. The project is no longer for netball only or for girls only. It is now for young people from any sport and of any gender. All these young people need is the support of their mentors, the Ministry of Youth and Sport, the Grenada Netball Association, because netball is the core sport of the project, and the Net Grenada Netball Association is a partner with the Caribbean Netball Association in this project. All other sports associations and other related agencies in Grenada, and most importantly, their parents and guardians. I anticipate many more proud moments that I will get from my Grenadian children. But for me, those are proud moments to come, and I may not be around to experience them, so I'm focusing on tonight. This function, which marks the launch of CHLP Spice Youth, the Grenada chapter of the CHLP Club, is the result of some remarkable work done by a group of young people whose leadership and organizational abilities remained latent and untapped up until almost three years ago. Yes, for the planning of this event, they had some help from adults who supported in the background, but they stepped forward and did what they had to do to get their club off the ground. I was kept abreast with their plans. I gave a few advice here and there, but by and large, they did the bulk of the work and their performance was outstanding. How many of us in this audience at the age of 14 to 23, the age group of CHLP, had the opportunity and were brave enough to seize it to do what these young people have done. Not only did they take the bull by the horn and form their club, but they developed their constitution using the regional template as a guide, elected their officers and assigned roles to these officers, something that we, the 